Welcome to the DD1324 online lectures. In this lesson, we'll cover header files, macros, and the preprocessor. Header files, which we denote with the .h extension, declare the return and parameter types for every function and the type for every variable. Rather than leaving the declarations in the body of the code where you can't easily find them, you can expose them in header files. We use header files typically for code that we'd like to share with other pieces of code. Header files typically contain function de declarations, variable declarations, definitions of new types, preprocessor directives like include, and importantly, header files do not contain actual C code. Let's begin by reviewing some key ideas and concepts about when and how we should use header files. Whenever we're writing code that we want to use as a module that is shared with other pieces of code, the .c file should have a corresponding header file, or a .h file. The .h file declares all the global functions and data from the module. Other .c files that want to use that module will, will include it with a hash include and then the name .h. Now we can look at some conventions for writing header files. First of all, .c files never contain global function prototypes and .h files never contain definitions, only declarations. The definitions should be in the C files. When we're using hash includes, we can, we can put those in a .c file or a .h file, but we should always choose whichever is more appropriate. If the code in the C file needs it, it's better to put it in the C file. If a definition in the header file needs it, it's better to put it in the header file. Any file with a .h file should be able to be built into a .o file, which means any time you build a module with a header file, it should be able to be built into an object file so it can be shared with other pieces of C code. Let's look at a simple example of how we would use a header file. First, if we had some C code that defined a function get number of threads, and this file was called threads.c, we would create a header file threads.h, and that header file would contain the declaration for the function get num of threads. If another file, let's say it's called fastalgorithm.c, wanted to call that function get number of threads, it must do an include of threads.h. Looking back to our calculator example from the previous from the previous lesson, let's look and see how the very large calc.c without a header file, where we had the entire code in one file, looked to begin with. We had various function definitions for addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication, and we had the prototypes at the top of the file. Afterwards, when we broke the file into into multiple files, we had now uh, we we take we took out the arithmetic operations and put them into an arithmetic.c file where now this arithmetic.c file has the function definitions and it also has an include of arith.h which included the function prototypes. The calc.c is able to use the addition operation as well as the others by just simply including hash include arith.h. It's useful to quickly look at how we can use header files along with the extern keyword to handle global variables in multi-file projects. So, if you remember from our previous example with the calculator, we defined a global variable in calc.c where the result of the calculation was a global variable defined before the main function. We also created a .h file where we declared that this was an external double and the name of the variable was result. Then in the other functions like arith.c, we included that .h file and we were able to use the, the variable as if it was a global variable. The extern keyword is useful for global variables in multi-file projects, but it does not actually define a variable or allocate space for it. Instead, it promises the compiler that some other module will define it. In this case, calc.c calc was defining the result. It allows your module to compile even when an undeclared variable or function is referenced, so long as eventually its .o object is linked to some other module that does declare a declaration for the variable or function. If you recall from earlier lectures, the first step in the compilation process is the C preprocessor. The C preprocessor is very important to, to think about when we're talking about header files because it's the part of the compilation process that includes header files into the source code. Anything that you see in a .c file or a .h file with a hash symbol or pound, like you see here, is a preprocessor command. The C preprocessor is a program that's invoked by the compiler 
and it handles the inclusion of header files, macro expansions, and conditional compilation. One of the most common preprocessor uses is to include header files using the hash include command. In this example on the left, we can see we're including stdio.h from the C standard library, which declares the printf command among other things. You can notice that we're enclosing it in these uh, angled braces, and that means that it's th that the compiler will search for the for the library in the standard paths. Files that are enclosed in double quotes look in the current source folder first, and we should normally use those for our own libraries. The C preprocessor is also co commonly used for conditional compilation, and in in this context, it uses the keywords if def and if and def, which mean if something is defined and if something is not defined. Then the preprocessor can also run construct the instructions conditionally. For example, here if it's checking um, if this is a Unix machine, and if it is, it will include unistd.h. Otherwise, if Win, if it's a Win32 machine, it will include Windows.h. Underscore Unix and underscore Win32 are macros that are typically defined by the compiler. Another useful function of the C preprocessor is to interpret macro expressions. Macro expressions can be defined to substitute text in the code, typically in capital, capital letters. Macro expressions tell the preprocessor to do a search and replace in your code. The name is usually written in caps and then it's replaced with the contents of the macro. Macros connect like variables or like functions. For example, here we can define pi as the value of 3.14159 at the top of the source code, and we can also define rad to degree of x as x times 57.29. And now inside the code, we can declare a variable pi, which is equal to 3.14159 easily by writing the capital words pi from the macro. When the preprocessor processes this file, it will physically, or it will cut and paste this 3.14159 and place it into the code here. And it will get rid of this line then during the preprocessing. And similarly, the angle here, we can write rad to degree of pi over 2, which will substitute this, this expression here for rad to degree. And this will give us the angle of 90. As we saw in the previous example with the calculator, the C preprocessor is also often used for uh, to do something called to make something we call guards. Guards are conditional compilation directives that are used in header files to protect against including the same header file twice. If we if we were to include the same header file twice, it can cause comp compilation errors. So the basic idea when when we're using guards in a header file is something like this. Inside the main body of the header file are the definitions that we want to declare for this, for module.c. Um, and we want to make sure that this is only declared once during the compilation process. So we do the following. We write, if module h is not defined, then we define module h, and we also make all of these declarations, and then we end the, the processor statement. So what happens is the very first time there's an include module.h, it will check and see if module.h is defined, if, if this variable module.h is defined, and it will see that it's not, and it will make, it will process all of these declarations, and then it will end. Now the next time another file tries to include module.h, it will go to the if not defined of module.h, and it will see, ah, we've already defined it, so we can skip all of this, and it keeps going. In this way, we can protect against these compilation errors that occur um, when we have uh, lots of header files. That concludes our lesson on header files, macros, and the preprocessor. Thank you for watching.